<laughs> All right, welcome to September 9th, Minecraft Software Developers Inc. Woo! Yay! Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, we had a uh, nice long weekend there, uh, and we're back. We've already done sprint planning for this week, so today we're just going to discuss any hiccups or things that have arisen since yesterday, and uh, or uh, other issues of concern. So. I guess we'll just go around the, uh, the clock here, starting with Gaz. I don't know anything blogging me. Um, if we have time, we can talk about uh, either the uh, the RCS no stuff, or um, you know, adding video support or one of the other things into there, but. Um, uh, I will set up a, a separate meeting for the RCS and stuff anyway, so okay. there's nothing I need to talk about. Okay. Ken. So uh, I'll be getting my um, cards tomorrow. I checked my tracking number. So we're heading back to the house uh, in the morning to get those, and then I'll start working on the... Um, the enclosure code for that. I had a really good conversation with Chris today um, regarding history, how we got where we're at, why I'm seeing what I'm seeing, and what we can do moving forward. Um, I'm trying uh, to build out the existing enclosure code that we have now that supports the receiver array such that it will continue to work in the absence of the new hardware so that we don't have to have yet another configuration uh, image for re-speaker versus our board. Um, it's quite easy to do because if we don't have our amplifier, for example, we throw a, an exception trying to hit the IQC device, I can simply trap that exception and say, okay, we'll turn up the volume or turn it down using the normal means and things like that. So. Uh, depending upon how different the interface that Kevin gives me on those cards is regarding the USB control channel, we should be pretty good uh, to start building something a little more robust so that it's not everything's a one-off. Um, one of the things I'd also like to do moving forward, but not right away, obviously, is to get one of the complaints I heard from the community is we don't really like allow them to select the devices, we just kind of force the devices we want, even in a laptop version. So if, you're, if your machine has three different sound cards, uh, Core kind of doesn't really give you an option to say, use this one versus that one. Or uh, if we have, like for example, on a Pi 4 on the Mark II, we have three potential output display devices. Um, you know, And so it would be really nice to be able to allow the skills to you know, select one of all three or all three of them, right? Maybe they want to play the uh, the, the uh, audio stuff out of my surround sound HDMI TV versus the speaker array or versus the mic uh, array we're going to have. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the stuff we were talking about. How did we get where we at? Where we're at? What's the difference between the PC and TV images and why historically? Um, you know, I think we're good, um, except we have to support the the, the the Mark One, which is kind of a problem. Uh, so I don't know what we're going to do there. The Mark One is kind of an issue. So, uh, but the point is, I uh, had good conversations and started looking into that code today and understanding the skills. Um, I understand now why we have so much of our code jammed in this skill. It's bad. Uh, and, you know, like I promise, I'm not going to gut it like a fish, but moving forward, we probably shouldn't have an individual skill for each device. I mean, what we should really have is a, much like Linux, the operating system, we should have a call to get, or maybe just during instantiation, get the capabilities of each module. Uh, so, for, for example, if a display module says, hey, you know, um, I have LEDs or I don't have LEDs. And so the skill can, you know, query the, uh, the uh, capabilities and say, okay, well, I can't, you know, twiddle the LEDs on this device. It doesn't support that, or I can uh, but, you know, the, the way it is now, it's not doable that way, but moving forward, that would be really, really nice. The thing that Chris and I discovered, which was more alarming, and which is something that we're going to be, uh, you know, drilling down into a little more moving forward is 
um, why our images are so different. Um, for example, my, my Mach 2 reports um, headphones in a re-speaker array. Chris's reports an ALSA device in a re-speaker array. Why is that? My kernel command brings in a bunch of uh, stuff for BCM2835. His doesn't. How did we get there? Uh, so that's part of what we'll be drilling down into a little more moving forward. In other words, we really would like to see at least all of us have an homogenous system so that all the D message kernel commands and all the hardware reporting and stuff seems consistent. It shouldn't be, not be, and it isn't. And so why is that is the question to be answered. And uh, there was something else we had discussed, Chris, that I was going to follow. Oh, what was it? I'm getting old. That's why old people keep uh, notebooks in their top pocket, their short-term memory stuff. Um, yeah, so that that's basically it. Um, why are we seeing differences, and uh, you know, can we get rid of that and make sure that everybody is on the same platform? I, I have no idea what build or what image. Is. Oh, I know what it was in a sec. Uh, Michael, it's not the blue systems image we're using. The blue systems image that Ake worked with on with them on is an Ubuntu install. The current image we have is an old Pycroft based on Debian. So that's our current image right now. Just wanted to uh, bring that up. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm not blocking anything. I'll have my boards in the morning, and hopefully pretty soon I'll have the uh, new boards integrated into our enclosure in a mod in a little more modular manner in an attempt to start being able to support some of these. That's my Okay, well that's fascinating. Um, so, uh, <laughs> fascinating. All right, so uh, I'm gonna move on to Chris Bear quickly because there's a lot of noise here. <laughs> yeah, so um, not really. The only thing I'm blocked by right now is that I'm trying to change the ownership of the new wakeboard directory on the upload server to be precise. It was my user, and that doesn't work out very well with my script. So that's still running and probably has been for a half hour, but it's a million files is trying to do. So um, once that's done, I'll be able to finish testing um, the move script, and then um, I'll move on to the uh, deletion logic we just talked about. So. And of course, I spent the good part of my early late afternoon, early morning, or early mo late after late morning, early afternoon with Ken today. So, gotcha. Okay, so you're making progress on on things, but uh, you actually have a blocker on the username stuff. Uh, it's, it's only blocking as long as this command runs. <laughs> it's I'm changing the ownership of these files right now, but there's a million of them, so okay, just take it. Gotcha. So it's not so much that somebody is blocking you as much as no. this this process that is running is blocking you. <laughs> yeah, it. I can't test my script if the if the files are not owned by the precise user. So okay, I'm working on that now. And I also spent some time today on the precise box, um, kind of making it more homogenous with how our servers and DigitalOcean are set up as far as users. I gave Ken a username. I you know, that kind of stuff, just little little things so that when I'm on this box, it looks and feels just like it, any other server we use. Okay. All right, great. Uh, Derek? Yes, all right, so forgive me if it gets loud here. <laughs> um, so mostly just trying to wrap up uh, some of the hardware stuff for Ken and um, Chris Bear and also balancing a little bit of uh, work on the wireframes for the new, will be the new tagger site. Um, I did have a quick question on that. Nothing's necessarily blocking me there, but um, are we still, um, so, what, okay, so what I got from Josh's document, we basically had seven different tags in, uh, in that UI. Um, is that that's still kind of up in the air or we've like locked those down at this point? Oh, um, 
Well, I think you should anticipate that those ch tags are going to change over time. Right. Yeah. So uh, don't, yeah, don't count on those staying the same. Don't count on those tags re even remaining there. Like we might eliminate them from the UI at some point. Uh, there's, so there's kind of two users of the system, right? There's the people who are using it and helping us tag things, but another user of the system think of as our internal dev team. And, uh, and from their point of view, you know, uh, they're going to be setting up, oh, these are the tags that I care about, right? And so they may want to expose through the UI only, you know, a certain three of the 20 tags that are possible in, at a given time, right? Until we catch up, until we get enough things tagged with, with those attributes. So, I mean, think about it being flexible from, from both, you know, the people who are tagging and from the people who are collecting, you know, directing which data to collect. Okay. Yeah, so one thing I was thinking about is trying to be a little bit more binary in the responses. So a lot of the suggestions, you know, Josh, you had were like, um, some of them are yes and yes, but. So like, for example, um, yes, the sample contains the wake word Mycroft. Yes, but the sample contains multiple samples. So we could split that out and instead of trying to do, you know, some of those kind of multiple things. So tagging say, okay, this this includes Mycroft, but we don't care at this point whether it's multiple. You're just tagging, is Mycroft in there? And then later it gets like, okay, well, all of these samples you're listening to have Mycroft. Now you're just tagging whether it's multiple or not multiple. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's more steps, but then well, the question is the binary. I think we want uh, to do A-B testing, right? So, you know, yeah. I, I would, you know, make each system, uh, you know, as user-friendly as possible, but I, I wouldn't try to guess which one is the right way to go. Yeah, I think sure. we want to test. Mm. So I think in a yeah, way, even, even with something like a pitch, even with something like a pitch tagging, um, you know, I think we want more, more than high and low, like, um, you know, masculine, feminine, and, and neutral kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. Right, right. I feel like there's going to be others that, that you can't really do that binary tree style. Well, you, well, can, okay. you can always do it. You can turn anything into a binary. Like, does this sound like a male voice? <laughs> right. You can say yes. Right. True. Right. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, too, is like, you could go that approach where it's like it's super simple and binary. Like, where does this have multiple? Or you know, the first pass would does this have the wake word? Yes, no. That's it. That's all we care about. We don't care about how many times they say it. You know. And then so anyway, uh, I've been working on thoughts like that. But um, I'll just continue on the path of that, just keeping it open. We don't have to decide yet. And then we can take tomorrow, and get into it more depth. Yeah, another thought I had, since it's going to be so dynamic or can be so dynamic, is maybe making each tagging event its own task, right? So you don't have five or ten things on one screen. You're 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 tagging the pitch, you know, in one thing, or you're tagging the, you know, whether there's not a whiteboard in the next step, and it's, you know, it's and you could be and it keeps it more interesting for the user because you're going back and forth between different things to tag, and um, you know, it could be depending on what we want tagged. We could come up with what we, we could present whatever question you know we need tagged at the moment rather than showing a whole screen of things that maybe have been tagged partially or not so that's just you know something that entered my brain recently that i wanted to share with you before yeah yeah that makes, that makes sense i've been thinking a little bit along the same line okay all right so yeah we can talk more about that tomorrow so, yep, that's that's what I've been up to. Okay, thanks, Derek. I was just going to call on Josh, but he just disappeared. So, uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, I don't think I have any uh, updates since yesterday. Um, I've been very busy with things not directly related to software development. So, um, yeah, I guess we can make it a short meeting today. Oh, there's Josh. Josh is back. Uh, Josh, would you like to, is there anything you, you've got to want to give an update on or any, any issues you want to raise? Uh, no significant issues. I'm got my printers running for, for enclosures. I'm ready to, to when, whenever I get an SJ201, ready to start pitching in there. And uh, looking forward to seeing the UX stuff from Derek. I, I would caution 
there's the temptation to simplify that interface to the point where it's really binary, like you said, Derek. But we have to remember that, that this can become very monotonous and mind numbing for the end users. And so that, that human factors piece when in the wake word tagging becomes important. Um, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I suspect that some variation in the questions we're asking um, and which pieces of the tagger we're working with are going to be beneficial. But too much variation may end up with a bunch of errors. In other words, if we're if we're asking if we're asking a variety of different questions in a variety of different ways, and we're, it's a task that's not really hugely engaging, people will make a bunch of mistakes. But if we ask too if we're asking too simplistic questions, or we're always asking the same question, people will zone out and stop, you know, contributing or whatever. So. I think striking a balance there is going to be really important, and that's that's something that I think is on your plate more than anything else. Uh, that's a really good point. I mean, I think we should think about the user experience, not just the moment to moment, but what's the overall experience? Like, how long do we ex expect them to sit down and tag things for? You know, is it is it two hours? Probably not. Is it even a half an hour? Probably not. Like, maybe, you know, we set it up so that we expect people to, you know, log in for five minutes and, you know tag as many things as they can, and then that's their session, right? Um, and if we think about it as a, a, a flow like that, then maybe you know, maybe we can help find the balance between that monotony and accuracy. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, but I, and I, then I still I, think A-B testing is going to be a big part of that as well. Yeah, and in the long run, you know, if we can come up with a, a system that's, uh, you know, robust and uh, you know, it really does keep people engaged and contributing in a positive way. Um, I think that's where the the power of the company. I mean, I, I think that's really the innovation that that helps us to really accelerate going forward. I, I, the the really having a community engaged in this training mechanism, you know, and then starting to do novel things with the data, right? And you know, throwing new and novel questions in there um, will will help us to build build a machine learning algorithm that's really powerful. And, and that's really where, where I'd always envisioned the company going. And it's really great to see everybody working on that now. Oh, I, I had another thought here on that. I've brought up A-B testing a couple of times. Um, I do want to make it, I want to make sure that uh, when we're talking about the architecture of the database and the source of the samples and the source of the tagging information, it should be clear. We talked about having a session as, as one of the things that we can track. Um, we should be able to get at the uh, which version of the UI, if we're running multiple versions, the user was using when they submitted a sample so that we can do some correlations with the accuracy of the data you know, through one method versus another method, that sort of thing. So. Um, That's a really good point, Michael. Yeah, you're going to have to change the database schema a little bit to handle that, Chris. Uh, maybe. I don't think so. I don't think we will. I just think it's in the implementation yeah. of the, the GUI. When it generates, you know, when it's submitting the data, it has to just include that information in its session info. Yeah. All right. Now, there's a meeting scheduled for tomorrow with no subject. Is this the meeting that we're going to talk about the tag? Can I put a subject on that? That's maybe my bad. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's it is not a meeting. Was that kind of for you and I? No, that's tomorrow's is for uh, for talking about this design. That's the one that's at one o'clock your time, right? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll add a, a, a title to that. I'm sorry, that's my bad. That's okay, but it's to talk about the tagger, right? Yep. Okay. Awesome. All right. Uh, any other things people want to talk about? We can make this a short one. Yes, what time is 1 o'clock central where you live? For me? Yeah. God dang. <laughs> no, I don't so, think I'm going to be there. <laughs> I was going to say, I suspect you, you can leave Gez off of that invite list. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think you did already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 3.30 a.m. I'll uh, <laughs> see you in my dream. Yeah. <laughs> You'll just be coming home from the pub, eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I did want to catch Josh up real quick on the discussion we had 
before we started recording, actually. Um, there's an open source company I talked to that does exact, kind of exactly what you were requesting yesterday. Um, they're targeting IoT um, devices, mostly routers, actually. But they, um, they said, uh, and I'll, I'll, quote, I'll quote this, um, they said, one click convert from Debian to Android, a push can completely change the OS. If it fails, it retains the last update and rolls back to, to the last the last known working. So anyway, um, found it interesting. Um, I'm sorry, Did, what, can you step back? One button convert from Debian to Android? Yeah. That's what he said. I mean, they, that's a, it can, they can push firmware updates. It can, um, you know, do, do everything at the kernel level, down to the kernel level on a device is what they're, um, it's a couple of canonic, former canonical guys. Um, anyway, sure. I think, I think I'd love to have a conversation with them and see, I'm highly skeptical of that given as there's no Python interpreter for Android that we've been able to identify that. that oh, no, one no, no. That that's not for us specifically. It would just be like they've they've shown on a device, like a device that's capable of running both Debian and Android, that they can remotely. Oh, shift between images. Yeah, I, I mean, I I suspect that the way they're doing it is exactly what I, you know, there's four partitions. One's a boot partition. You've got two operating system partitions and a config partition, and and you, when you recycle the device, you just change the pointer, right? And you, you move the partitions in as a single. Um, but he, he mentioned other ways of like, you know, flashing just the firmware, like you just want to, you know, update just the firmware out, outside the OS and this whole containerization of stuff that they've got figured out. But it sounded like exactly what you were asking for, you know, to- Yeah, let's, let's talk to him. And then, you know, let's also ask him the question that we get all the time. And, you know, who are your direct competitors? Right. Because if you well, because if you're proud of your product, you should be able to point at your competitors and say, hey, like here they are. And this is why we're better. Right. And uh, let's have a conversation with all of them. And maybe this company is better than their competitors and we can work with them. I, I'd be really excited to have that pr that particular problem fully solved so that we can stop messing with it. Because I, I honestly think that of all of the things that are tripping us up, I think that's really high on the list and nobody in the company is spending time on it or has the time to spend on it or is inclined to spend the time on it, depending on who you are at the company. Well, that, that uh, that's the Panta Hub company that you talked about, Derek, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we can get a follow-up call with them next week. Um, they're, they're called Panta Hub? Yeah. P-A-N-A, Panta Hub? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we P P A N T A hub. Yep. I'm really I'm excited about their name. I, <laughs> I think that they're a win just on the brand. All right, great. So, yeah, I, thought, I thought it was a fortuitous kind of coincidence. So we'll see see if anything comes from it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, hey, I mean one last thing. I'm printing this enclosure in lid, Derek. Is there any reason when I switch from one resin to another, I need to rebuild the scaffolding stuff? I'm just changing, uh, just changing colors and resolution. No. Well, well, in form labs, they might they might make you do redo the scaffolding if you're changing resin. It just they, they, let, you, have they, let, you, they let you import the other one. So we'll see how it goes. Well, yeah, just thinking, you know, it's it's an optical thing. So there's the if the color changes, you, you might actually change how much time it needs to hit the laser. So yeah. Right. Anyway. All right. How many baits are on the line? You got yours there, guys? <laughs> I think it's just mine. Just mine. Derek, has your baby met Derek's baby yet through the through the video chat? <laughs> you guys should introduce yeah, yeah. virtual play dates. <laughs> there you go. It's definitely a thing. Thanks, uh, folks. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk again uh, tomorrow, and then we'll be back here on Friday. Okay. See y'all later. Talk tomorrow. Yeah.